this neoclassical edifice, imbued with beaux art sensibilities, inspired by the mannerists of the late Cinquecento, captivates the essence of late Baroque architecture. Albeit with the Greek proportion system derived by and owing to the golden mean, and captivated by the oh! use of... You've seen that show before. This is a different kind of architecture show. I'm Jody Applegate, and this is Building Blocks. The Guggenheim Museum in New York is one of the last works by the great American architect Frank Lloyd Wright. So why does it look like a Mr. Softy ice cream? And can you really walk a slinky down its sloped circular ramp? this museum I think it's gorgeous why I just like Frank Lloyd Wright's architecture do you think you could walk a slinky down the ramps um I don't think so because I don't think I'd be able to turn the corner to, to, to turn the arc um, you could do it part way down can you walk a slinky down the curved ramp of the Solomon R Guggenheim Museum in New York today on Mythbusters we will bust or confirm that myth and please we are professionals do not try this at home <laughs> The slinky was invented by naval engineer Richard James in the 1940s. It is a helical spring. Frank Lloyd Wright's distinctive design for an art museum in New York City caused a lot of controversy when it was being built. Frank said that entering into the spirit of this interior, you'll discover the best possible atmosphere in which to show fine paintings or listen to music. But other people didn't agree. One critic said that with total disregard for the art and the visitor, Wright's piece de resistance, more than any other building, symbolizes the freedom architects enjoyed in the 20th century. So what makes a good museum, and why is this one so different? Was Frank ahead of his time, or out of control? We know that Frank Lloyd Wright broke with classical architecture as part of the modern movement, but why this shape for his museum design? Now, when art started to be created for museums instead of people's homes, it freed the artist from having to appeal to people's senses. He didn't care if the patron liked it or not. So they allowed the artist to make commentary with their art, either political or social, and often that commentary was offensive. It meant, however, that when you had a museum show, that you wanted to control what the patrons saw and when they saw it. And the traditional museum plan must have been very frustrating for artists and art curators because it allowed patrons to move from one room to another in whatever order they want and maybe skip a room entirely. So I suspect that when Frank Lloyd Wright was designing the Guggenheim, he wanted to give that control back to the artist and the art curator. At least in his mind, he thought he was doing something good. And he set up the circulation, the pattern which, which people would move through the Guggenheim in a linear fashion. That is, everything was in sequence. You would move from one gallery to the next, to the next picture, in the order that the artist and the art curator wanted you to see it. Well, you can't fit that big long line in a city. So what Frank did was he took that line and he coiled it up like a snake to fit into the Guggenheim site. Does that Mr. Softy ice cream cone remind you of anything? What does it, it remind reminds you of? me of um, the Snake Museum. And which is the Snake Museum? The Guggenheim. <laughs> you call it the Snake Museum? Because it looks like the sn a snake. Oh, coiled around itself. Yes, and it also kind of looks like that, right? Yes. I have never noticed the similarity, but now that you mention it, I do. <laughs> it's terrific. Yeah, you know what? Um. There's no similarity on the top. There's no similarity because there's no skylight on your ice cream. So. Yes. Have you noticed that Mr. Softy looks like something? Mm, no, he looks like uh, an ice cream cone. But is there a certain large, famous museum that he kind of looks like? Uh, I, I really don't know. It's really close by, really near here. Really? Yeah. I didn't know it. 
Right, the Guggenheim. He looks like the Guggenheim. No, I didn't know it. Does it remind you of a slinky? Um, I hadn't thought of that. Um, Perhaps a Mr. Softy ice cream cone? <laughs> I hadn't thought of that either, actually. Um, a collapsible drinking cup? Uh, you're getting warmer. <laughs> a flower pot? Uh, sure, I could see that. It's a great art museum and uh, unique and extremely functional. You know, we, we love the Met, but it's a little harder to, you know, if you're going to take one artist, like I think Ken Dansky has uh, been here or maybe still is, and do that retrospective of his whole life and his whole career, being able to go around the spirals and see that, um, it, it just sort of mimics the growth in time and the evolution. So I, I, we thought it was brilliant. In section, Frank Lloyd Wright's Guggenheim has windows right above the gallery. So sunlight comes in, bounces off, and illuminates the painting. He also tilted the walls back so that viewers would see the painting at the same angle as they were painted by the artist. But this was not really particularly successful because no one really wants to have their paintings viewed this way. So what they do instead is they prop them up vertically so that they are straight up and down. The other thing about this gallery is that it presumes you're hanging small paintings. So if you hang something larger, people complain that you cannot step back far enough to see the painting without falling over the edge of the railing. Intriguing piece, huh? Intriguing, yes. I'm not some lonely guy who goes to art museums trying to pick up lonely artichokes. Now, in the slinky, all the curves line up. But when Frank Lloyd Wright designed the Guggenheim Museum, he staggered them so they began to stretch outward and cantilever over the ramp below. This gave it structural stability as the bottom ramp supported the upper ramp. It also gave the Guggenheim its inverted cone shape and creates a nice void in the middle, which is called the atrium, and that's covered by the skylight. So remember, helical, helix, it's the same word that gave us helicopter. That's a good segue, because I suggest we test the myth by using a helicopter to penetrate the Guggenheim skylight using a hydraulic ram. Slide it and bust her down a piano wire guided by... The word museum itself derives from the Greek word for place of the muses. Muses were the nine minor goddesses said to inspire sculptors, painters, and musicians in their arts. In fact, the museum as we know it today is one of the newest building types. Before we had museums, we had temples, churches, office buildings, shopping centers, houses, apartment buildings, markets, indoor theaters, public baths, factories, and sports arenas. The first public museums were started in Europe around the 18th century. They were generally converted palaces wherein the art treasures of the rich were opened up to the public for the first time, either through benevolence or revolution. The Pitti Palace in Florence, the Louvre in Paris, and the Hermitage in St. Petersburg are good examples of this. Now, in the United States in the 19th century, when we began to build our own museums from the ground up, we borrowed the form from Europe of that classical palace, and we made it into a museum. So our buildings would become instantaneously venerable. And the Art Institute of Chicago and the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York are good examples of that. How do you compare it to other museums that you've seen? Well, let's start with the Hermitage. The Hermitage is a wreck. Let's go to the Louvre. The French used three centuries to finish it. It was ugly. They used three different architects. Uh, I think this is a masterpiece, my opinion. The Guggenheim family made their fortune in mining and spent their wealth on, among other things, creating museums in Berlin, Venice, and most recently, Bilboa, Spain, by Frank Gehry. For the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum in New York City, they wanted the preeminent architect of the 20th century, Frank Lloyd Wright. 
Wright was a phenomenal architect who led the way in aesthetics and construction. Wright is the Elvis of architecture. Thank you. Thank you very much. He wasn't necessarily the first or the best modern architect, but his name has entered the realm of immortality. Chuck Berry is to Elvis Presley as Louis Sullivan is to Frank Lloyd Wright. And like Elvis, he was able to live the life of a celebrity. He was heralded and forgotten and made a comeback or two over the years. In fact, in 1938, when Falling Water became famous and Wright was on the cover of Time magazine, a lot of people thought he was a washed-up has-been, if not already dead. Well, that would make him the Abe Vigoda of architecture, at least when we're shooting this. And that added to his legend. In fact, he's probably the only architect most people can name. I just like Frank Lloyd Wright's architecture. Can you name some other famous architects? Yes. Well, would you do that for us now? And don't say Mike Brady. You have me on the spot. Yes, you asked to be on the spot. You, do you know who designed it? I do, it's Frank Lloyd Wright. Can you name any other famous architects? Uh, I am Pi or Pay. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Do you know who designed it? Uh, right. I'm right. <laughs> Is that right or not? It's right. <laughs> yeah. Can you name any other famous architects? Uh, not sure now. <laughs> I don't know that much about architecture. And how many architects can you name? Oh my gosh. Um, um, Herzog and Demeron, um, Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, Mies van der Rohe, um, Richard Meyer. Should I go on? Um, <laughs> we're, we're very impressed. All right, how, you young man, how many architects can you name? Mm, I don't know any architects. So, Jody, I would say one of Frank Lloyd Wright's most important creations was the cult of Frank Lloyd Wright. He had so captivated his audience that people would put up with leaky buildings or expensive repairs just for the privilege to live or work in one of his buildings. The rest of us architects, we would just get sued. And his personal life only added to the cult. It was full of the kinds of scandal that would rival what we see on today's TV gossip shows. Yes, but, you know, his allure is understandable. I mean, we architects are just the epitome of the alpha male. I think women are attracted to our creative sensibilities, our ability to erect edifices. And that's why in movies we're played by the likes of Gary Cooper and Paul Newman and Wesley Snipes and Tom Hanks and Brian. It's time for Sarah Lately. Tonight, Frank Lloyd Wright's Done It Again, Prairie Style. Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Palin. Rascal Frank Lloyd Wright is in trouble again, don't you know? There hasn't been an architect bad boy like this one since Stanford White was shot on the Madison Square Roof Garden in 1906 by the husband of his teenage paramour. Be careful, though. This is a family show. Uh, well, look, FLW is just out of control. First, he redefines a new modern American aesthetic by using natural inspirations such as wheat and corn, the same way ancient Greek architects used the acanthus leaves and nautilus shells. So he ends up creating the particular popular offshoot of the 19th century arts and crafts movement known as the Prairie style. And he sends every other American and European architect back to school. To stay at home would only be a crime But there's no car to leave the New York grime For cold spring trees we can only pine But we can go, we can go, we can go To the Guggenheim Temple at the Met Egyptian space sublime The natural history's got Dinos in their prime Of course at the MoMA there's mannequins in slime oh, We can go, we can go, we can go To the Guggenheim A week's work of meetings Have kept me inside Lord, get me home to you I've cried Oh Lord, how I've tried To be with you 
would simply be divine. We'll dress up nice and we'll go out to dine. I've given my love, now I'll give you some time. So why not go? Let's go, let's go. Come on, let's go, let's go. Come on, let's go to the goo. What do you think of the experience when you go inside the Guggenheim? I think it's sensual. In 1992, an addition was made to the Guggenheim designed by Guathme Siegel Associates. It was very well done and in the spirit of what Frank Lloyd Wright might have done himself. But some critics thought the final composition less dignified. Boston! Commissioned in 1943, construction on the Guggenheim Museum didn't start until 1956, and it wasn't completed until 59, six months after Wright's death. With its ever-changing exhibits on art, design, and architecture, the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum attracts 1.3 million visitors annually. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jody Applegate, and this has been Building Blocks. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Frank Lloyd Wright has left the building. Wow, building!